In some way, is a community defined by its name, or does a community define its name? As you glance across a map of the United States, a common theme arises. Wherever you find a Jasper or Newton, the other is usually nearby. In fact, there are more than 60 Newtons and Jaspers in all, and more than half share a close relationship. Where does this connection stem from? The origins can be traced back to author Mason Locke Weems, or Parson Weems as he is known. And while Weems' name might not sound recognizable to many, his tales have infiltrated early American history. Weems' biography of George Washington created the Cherry Tree Fable, I Cannot Tell a Lie, which was intended to provide a morally instructive tale for the youth of the nation. Grant Wood depicted the tale in an iconic painting showing Weems pulling back the curtain on the fable. Weems' second book, The Life of General Francis Marion, published in 1809, focused largely on the 2nd South Carolina Infantry Regiment during the Revolutionary War. It was from these pages that Weems tells the exploits of two of Marion's sergeants, Newton and Jasper. One day in the spring of 1779, Newton and Jasper emerged from their hiding place beside a spring near Savannah and dramatically rescued a number of American prisoners, among them a woman and a child, from a party of ten British captors. In the process, the two Americans disposed of the British soldiers without receiving a scratch. As Weems writes, the brave are always tender-hearted. It was so with Jasper and Newton, two of the most undaunted spirits that ever lived. Newton said, Jasper, my days have been few, but I believe their course is nearly done. Why so, Jasper? Why I feel that I must rescue these poor prisoners or die with them, otherwise that woman and her child will haunt me to my grave. Well, that's exactly what I feel too, replied Newton. And here is my hand and my heart to stand by you, my brave friend, to the last drop. Thank God a man can die but once, and there is not so much in this life that a man need be afraid to leave it, especially when he is in the way of his duty. The two friends then embraced with great cordiality, while each read in the other's countenance that immortal fire which beams from the eyes of the brave when resolved to die or conquer in some glorious cause. Conquer they did, nor was the liberated lady ungrateful. She exclaimed, Where, where are those blessed angels that God sent to save my husband? Directing her eyes to Jasper and Newton, where they stood like two youthful Samsons. In the full flowing of their locks, she ran and fell at their knees before them, and seizing their hands, kissed and pressed them to her bosom, crying out, Dear angels, dear angels, God bless you. Weems tale was accepted as gospel by the people of the day, and ever since, the gallant Newton and undaunted Jasper have been standing side by side. Although one man who knew the facts said it simply wasn't so. General Peter Ory, whose own name was on the book title page along with that of Weems. Ory had sketched a history of Marion's Brigade and given it to Weems to publish with the promise that Weems not alter the sense or meaning of his work. When the book appeared, Ory was horrified and wrote to Weems. You have carved and mutilated it. Most certainly it is not my history but your romance. Ory's protest went unnoticed by the public. In the case of William Jasper, his praise is not undue. He was an honored hero whom General William Moultrie called a brave and active scout. He held a revolving commission as a part-time spy, but mostly he is remembered for rescuing his regimental banner during the bombardment of Fort Sullivan in 1776. Jasper died defending the colors of his regiment during the Siege of Savannah in 1779. Weems took great liberty, however, with Newton. Or he wrote that Jasper was an honest man, but Newton was a thief and a villain. And since no first name was attributed to Newton, his identity remains a mystery. There were four Newtons that served in the regiment, but only one was a sergeant and his name was John. He was discharged, however, a year before the alleged rescue at Savannah occurred. In the years between 1820 and 1850, new towns, counties, and communities sprung up all over America, adopting the names Newton and Jasper to honor the brave sergeants. And so it was that on February 15, 1831, the Illinois legislature meeting in Vandalia, the state capital at the time, influenced by the romanticized story of Jasper and Newton, thrust upon their newly created county the name Jasper with the county seat of Newton. In the nearly two centuries since its founding, Jasper County, Illinois, and the city of Newton have forged their own legacy and identity, and their names have become more than simply another myth on the map.